Hello. I really wanted to get this video out sooner, but unfortunately I've had laryngitis for most of the past week, which is why my voice is going to sound a bit funny even today. Now, anyway, let's get on to the procedure and documents necessary for obtaining a working visa for Japan. Before I begin, if you're not in the loop yet, please take a look at my previous video and get caught up. You can either click this annotation or find the link in the description. Okay, so once you get accepted, this is what's going to happen. Your employer is going to send you a list of documents that you need to prepare. You are going to send those documents to your employer. They will take it to the Immigration Bureau on your behalf. The Immigration Bureau will issue you a certificate of eligibility. Your company will then send that certificate back to you. You will take that certificate to the Japanese Embassy in your country or to the Consular Department which is responsible for your country. And finally, the Japanese Embassy is going to issue you an entry permit based on that certificate of eligibility and uh, possibly some other documents or an interview. In my case, my employer received all of my documents and I am now waiting for them to take the package to the Japanese Immigration Bureau. However, the process of obtaining and sending all those documents was certainly not straightforward, thanks largely to the wonderful world of Serbian bureaucracy. But let us get to the point. You will receive very detailed instructions about the type of documents that you need to put together and about their format. In my case, one half of the documents needed to be printed out, signed and then sent by snail mail, while the other half of the documents needed to be sent from an official university email address by someone from my university. All in all, these are the documents that I needed to send. Uh, my diploma or a graduation certificate, a grades transcript, a letter stating that the language of instructions was English, which will serve as a degree verification document. Uh, official certified translations of the above, visa sponsorship application information sheet, one passport photo in color, one copy of my passport photo and signature page in color, a letter of commitment addressed to my employer, a cover letter addressed to the Immigration Bureau of Japan, degree verification documents, if statement about the language of instruction is not used for these purposes, updated CV and authorization for the employer to submit a certificate of eligibility application on my behalf. Sorry for reading, but I didn't want to miss anything. Now, even though the names of most of these documents will tell you exactly what they are, uh, let me just go through each document real quick. The diploma or a graduation certificate and grades transcript are rather self-explanatory. Those are the documents that are given to you by your university when you graduate to prove that you actually graduated. Statement about the language of instruction proves that your classes were in English, which was, at least in my case, one of the requirements for actually getting the job. Now, if you will be using this statement as part of the degree verification documents, then the statement needs to confirm you underwent courses and or programs which uh, were taught in English. This needs to be as official as possible, so either an official letter, an official certificate, or an official transcript sealed in an official university envelope. Visa Sponsorship Application Information Sheet simply lists all the documents that you're supposed to send along with it. The photo you will need to include has to be 3 cm by 4 cm. Now, since this is not usual size, at least in Serbia, you will need to tell your photographer to crop it in a way specified by your employer. The letter of commitment addressed to your employer needs to contain details given to you by your employer. The cover letter addressed to the Japanese Immigration Bureau should express your interest in Japan, the reason why you are seeking employment there, um, your qualifications and or your experiences, commitment to your future employer, and must contain your home address and a handwritten signature, just like the letter of commitment. Now, at this point it would be good to say that all of the documents that require your home address on them have to have the exact same address and personal information on them. The degree verification documents should be sent by an official degree verification institution. However, if such an institution does not exist in your country, it doesn't exist in Serbia either, uh, then the letter about the language of instruction can also be used as a degree verification document as long as it is sent by the university. Your updated CV should contain every single thing that you have done so far since leaving high school. Um, it must not have any gaps longer than three months. Um, if you were unemployed, for example, you could write uh, May 2012, 
uh, hyphen April 2014 unemployed, full stop, or working as a freelancer, whatever. The point is that you have to cover every single month of every single year since completing high school. The authorization for the employer to submit a certificate of eligibility application on your behalf is pretty self-explanatory. Now we come to the fun part. Out of all these documents, my university was supposed to send my graduation certificate, grades transcript, statement about the language of instruction, and degree verification documents via email, and I was supposed to send everything else by regular mail. Except, my faculty does not offer this type of service. Officially, it is unheard of for the university to send emails on behalf of the students, and it's simply not done. There are no forms which would enable it to do so, or which would enable me to submit an official request for an email to be sent on my behalf by the university. It's simply not done. Problem 1. Also, the Faculty of Philology, which teaches foreign languages and educates teachers of foreign languages, does not offer a certificate stating that the foreign language which you graduated in was taught in that foreign language. Problem 2. Furthermore, according to the law, all certificates issued by official state institutions, such as the University of Belgrade, must be in Serbian, written in the Cyrillic script. Therefore, the university does not offer English versions of any certificates whatsoever. Problem 3. Finally, there are no verification institutions in Serbia. So the only way for me to get my hands on a degree verification document requested by both my employer and by the Japanese Immigration Bureau would be to get my hands on a document which has not been written yet from an institution that does not exist. Problem 4. Cool. So if you're in the same boat as I was, this is how I resolved the situation. Now, fortunately though, I've only had the best experiences with the majority of teachers and members of administration at the Belgrade University Faculty of Philology, and I have nothing but words of praise for them. These people did their best to help me in any way possible, uh, for which I will eternally be grateful. Okay, so since these documents do not exist, I made them. I typed out a Word document, including all the information such an official letter should have according to the instructions from my employer, and went straight to the head of my department. And I explained my case, and she signed my paper for me. I also obtained the signature of the deputy head of department and from another teacher. So with these three signatures I went to the secretary of the department who stamped the document with the seal of the department. And with all this I went to the vice dean for international cooperation, explained again what this was all about and um, showed him the document. Um, he also signed it and this enabled me to get the most important thing, the official seal of the faculty. Furthermore, the Vice Dean agreed to send scans of my diploma certificate and grades transcript, along with their corresponding notarized translations, which I had already commissioned previously, scanned and packed into the same PDF document as the original file, and this new statement about the language of instruction uh, from his university email to the email address of my employer. So, I guess my point is that even if someone tells you no, this is impossible, this is not done, this does not exist, we do not do it that way, etc. Do not give up. It is frustrating, yes, but you just need to find that one person willing to stand up for you and to slightly bend, not even break the rules. I was very fortunate to have five such people at my faculty, but uh, I know from the stories of my friends who applied to different programs and courses and jobs abroad that this is not always the case. Many times these bureaucratic hurdles may seem impassable to you, but do not give up hope. Be boring, be pushy. If nothing else, they might just give you the paper to get you off their backs. But at the same time, be aware that the educational institutions and professors and employees do not usually make up these rules themselves. Bureaucracy is almost always dictated from above, so uh, if someone refuses to sign your paper or uh, refuses to help you in getting something that is not supposed to exist or is not usually done, then that does not mean they are being jerks. It simply means that they might get in trouble for bending the rules even a little bit, and not a lot of people are really willing to get themselves in trouble. 
Okay, so that would be it for this video. And uh, for now, this part concludes the whole bureaucracy and administration story. Now, of course, if something else happens, I will make a video about it, but uh, and anyway, I will make sure to keep you posted about how the preparations unfold. In my next video, I plan to talk about where to find useful and up-to-date information about living and working in Japan, and focus more on my own thoughts and feelings regarding all of this, rather than on just stating facts about documents and the like. So, bye for now, and stay tuned!